Today, I'm gonna to be showing you the process of writing a punchline from scratch. And I'm doing this because when you hear your favorite rapper's punchlines, you're hearing the finished product, and that's great. But you can be discouraged if you don't understand what it took for them to get to that finished end result. Because it doesn't just happen like that all the time out the gate naturally. We get to that finish line by a lot of different iterations figuring out what doesn't work, what doesn't sound good. We, we eliminate all those things and that's what gets us to that final product or closer to that final product. And that's the creative process with anything, whether you're making beats, writing songs, coming up with a hook, so whatever, it's all an iterated process. And so I wanna show you that iterated process when it comes to specifically writing a punchline. So step number one is we need some type of premise, some type of idea, some type of theme or concept, something that we can start building upon. And also don't, don't wait until you start getting things fleshed out to go ahead and start writing stuff down. Just go ahead, the quicker you can start writing stuff down, the better and the more things can start flowing for you. So I'm gonna switch over to my desktop view so you can actually see me writing and let's get straight to it. So the first thought I had was the theme of something around uh, this whole Will Smith, um, Chris Rock thing. Now I may not go with this one just because it's been seemingly beat, beat to death here recently, but it's something that comes to mind. I may or may not explore it, but I'm just getting it down. And then as I write this, is a seemingly alleged brewing beef between uh, the game and Eminem. I'm just gonna write that down. And one thing I wanna point out here is when it comes to punchlines, if you want your, your lyrics to really have impact on the listener, you want your punchline to be something that people will understand that's gonna resonate with them. And you'll have different punchlines that are meant for different like demographics of people and stuff like that. So that's something to be very mindful of is who you want this punchline to hit with. You know, for an example, if you was a rapper that's going to like, let's say like a freestyle battle uh, in your local school or something, then you may want to craft things around that particular venue, those particular people, your school, your mascot, teachers names, you know, local current events things like that to really hit the crowd. So you wanna be thinking about who your listeners are, who is your crowd that you're trying to play to. So again, just jotting ideas as they come down. I thought to use will as a verb and instead of a noun, but it could be a double entendre. It could be both a verb and a noun. So like for an example, will you do this? Will you do that? I can play off a of Will Smith's name like that. So I could say something like will, Smith, Rock, Chris, like a question. Another thing I thought about playing off of Smith is Smith and Wesson, which is the type of gun manufacturer. So again, when we're, when we're playing around with words, we're always trying to see how much can we extract out of something? How can we associate more things with whatever our concept is? And that will reveal more and more possibilities of what you possibly could do with your punchline. And of course, the uh, incident happened at the Oscars. So you also have that Oscars. You also got what Oscar the grouch. Then we have the fact that it was a slap. So thinking of different terminologies for slap, like uh, like we would use like slap as in like describing a beat that knocks really hard, like that beat slaps, right? So I'm gonna write that down. Then we have August, which is uh, who Will Smith's wife had a uh, entanglement with. So uh, I actually heard this one online, like in a comment section somewhere. Somebody said that uh, people are going to be talking about this all the way until August. Also using the word hand, which connects with slap. So like, uh, Will, could you give me a hand? Also, another word I could play with is open. So Will Smith hit Chris Rock with an open hand slap right? Also, Will Smith and his wife are known for having an open marriage. So it could be like a tie in with open. Also going back up here to my Will Smith, Will Smith rock Chris. You could also say Will Smith rocked Chris. Also, Chris Rock was in a very popular movie called Lethal Weapon. Um, Will Smith attack was not a lethal weapon. That could be a potential tie in. Also, there's a show called Everybody Hates Chris. Also, the word Chris you could tie in to Christian, Christmas, Crystal, Crispy. Also, sometimes when you're just writing in general, it can send you down little rabbit holes where you start looking into things and kind of studying things and stuff like that. And so I just realized that um, Chris Rock was actually in an episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and he played Jasmine, which is interesting. So I don't know. <laughs> it could be something of note. 
to uh, write down. Also with Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you could say clear the air. Also going back to the word jasmine, it could also be jazz men. So I've got a pretty good amount of stuff written down here. So I can start kind of fleshing some things out and see if I can't write me a few punchlines out of all of this. So I like the beat slaps like will. So uh, I'm going to put something like that. Um, this beat slaps harder than Will Smith did Chris Rock. Or you could say this beat slaps harder than Will. Or this beat slaps harder than Will did rock. That's one thing that we do a lot when we're writing is we play around with the verbiage of something, like how we word it. Play around with writing it in different ways and see which one you like the best. That's why it's also too important when you're playing around with rhyme schemes to keep what you're really wanting to say intact as well because you don't want that to take over what you really wanted to say. There's a, there's a certain types of craftsmanship that just goes into the way that you word something. So sometimes we let those rhyme schemes kind of take a back seat for a little bit and let what we're really trying to say come through in the forefront. For an example, I could say this beat slaps harder than Will did Chris, but if I say this beat slaps harder than Will did rock, rock sounds stronger than Chris. So I may choose to go with rock just for that reason. And also kind of building upon this line here where I say, Will, could you give me a hand? Also just the line itself, like saying, Will you give me a hand? It, <laughs> it gives it new meaning. So we could possibly use that as well. Will you give me a hand? Or one thing I'll never ask at the Oscars, will you give me a hand? Will you give me a hand? If you're ever at the Oscars, never ask, will you give me a hand? Or I could say, never ask the prince, will you give me a hand? That could also be a really good line for, for someone like Sahada Prince, someone whose name is Prince in their name. That could be a really good punchline for them. Matter of fact, I would not be surprised if Sahada the Prince uses some type of wordplay off of this at some point, because that dude right there is crazy with the punchlines. And I'm really liking this never ask the prince, will you give me a hand line? Opposed to the Oscars line, if you're ever at the Oscars, never ask, will you give me a hand? That could work, but I mean, less people will ever be at the Oscars. You know what I'm saying? Like more people will not join the Oscars than people that will, but it could still be a good punch line, but I'm kind of leaning towards the Prince line. Never ask a Prince or never ask the Prince. And see right there, that's a little bit more subtle, which I kind of like. And so something like this would also benefit from having a little bit of setup probably, or using other things in close, close proximity with it that will let people know that you're talking about Will Smith. So for the example, with this line here, I could say like, there's two things I learned that I now understand. And then I say one line after that, that rhymes with hand and another line that rhymes with hand. Let me try it out. There's two things I've learned that I now understand. I wanna incorporate rock somehow. All right, so I'm kind of working that out right now. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it, but right now I'm thinking, let the truth be your rock. Or or um, to be solid as a rock, you must something. Also, I'm thinking about the rock, like Dwayne Johnson. So like to be solid as a rock, you don't have to be a wrestling fan. Probably not going to use that, but just playing around with words. Also on the let the truth be your rock line, I could also add don't build your house upon sand. Sand also ties in with rock, um, but also it's a little bit of a metaphor talking about foundations and solid foundations, which it could tie back into Will and Jada's marriage and stuff like that. So I'm going to move this solid as a rock line out the way because I'm not feeling that one as much. And another line I thought of was just because someone smiles in your face doesn't make them a friend. Then I would say, and never ask a prince, will you give me a hand? Then also I started off this, these lines with there's two things I've learned. Well, now I've said three things. So that's an easy fix. I could just say there's three things. And also three and things is another kind of close internal rhyme, that three sound, that th, th sound, I mean. You got the, you got there's three things. You got three thes right behind each other. So that's another dope um, addition to that to kind of give it more value. So I really like that. Instead of saying them, I'm going to say um. To shave a little bit off. Just because someone smiles in your face doesn't make them a friend. Instead of make them a friend, them is longer than M. Just because someone smiles in your face doesn't make them a friend and never ask a prince, will you give me your hand? 
And how about as I add a bonus, I fit this to an instrumental just to bring it all together. Okay, so the instrumental that I'm gonna use is one that I produced called 100 Miles and Running. And I am going to fit this to that and make it sound good. It shouldn't be, shouldn't need too much tweaking, but let's go ahead and do that real quick. Yeah. There's three things I've learned that I now understand. Let the truth be your rock, don't build your house up on sand. Just because someone smiles on your face don't make it. So that, that third line is getting a little bit dense. Just because someone smiles on your face doesn't make them a friend. So instead of saying just because, I can say just cause. I'm shaving that off a little bit. Just cause someone smiles on your face. And I may be able to, instead of saying doesn't, I may be able to, I may be able to just say don't. Shaves that off just a little bit. Let's see. Let me try it again. There's three things I've learned that I now understand. Let the truth be your rock, don't build your house upon sand. Just because they smile on your face, don't make them a friend. And never ask a prince, will you give me your hand? So one thing I really want to point out is this. At the very beginning of this video, when I was just getting my ideas down, I thought about the whole Will Smith, Chris Rock thing. And initially I thought, nah, I'm probably not going to do anything with that because it's kind of been beat to death. But as I started exploring my ideas, I kept getting more and more ideas for that particular topic. And so I just followed the inspiration and I kept going with that. I started, I kept getting different things I could connect to it. And you see my brainstorm of just all these different ideas I'm putting down. And then I just look at those, all those pieces that came down from that brainstorm and I start piecing them together and seeing like, Hey, what do I want to use? And even down to the very end, I kept tweaking lyrics and stuff ever so slightly to make things work. And this right here just goes to show you how much of an iterative process, the creative process really is. We don't know in the very beginning all the exact moves that we need to make in order to get what we're doing to the finish line. We only get to that finish line by all these mistakes that we make along the way or figuring out what are all the wrong moves that we don't want to make. That just gets us closer to all the right moves that we could potentially make. And even with these lyrics that I wrote, these are just four bars. You know, if this was a whole verse, I'm probably still going to tie even more stuff in to create a whole overall theme with my, my message. So this gives you just a snapshot view of working on one particular punchline and how that leads into more lyrics and all that fun stuff. So don't be discouraged when you're writing your punchlines if things just don't happen automatically. This is what the process really looks like. This is what you don't really get to see behind the scenes when your favorite rappers and stuff are working on their lyrics that you've grown to love throughout the years. This is what it really looks like. This is how the sausage is made in those recording studios. Now you've seen the product of my writing process for this video, but I want to see some of y'all stuff. Please have some fun, come up with some punchlines and drop them in the comment section below. I would love to check them out. My name is Cole Mize with ColeMizeStudios.com where I strive to make you a better rapper now. And if you're trying to perfect your rap skills, make sure that you get yourself a free copy of my ebook, The Number One Fundamental to Rapping, via the link in the video description below. And subscribe to this channel for more straight to the point, no BS, how to rap video tutorials just like this one. And always remember, when it comes to rapping, there's no rules. There's only techniques. Peace. Hey man, you see that subscribe button right there? Get the bell icon. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Hey, I know you see that like button, right? Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. And look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself today I'm gonna kill it, kill it.